Well, good morning, uh, Tuesday morning, uh, time for our pastor's coffee. Each week we try to get together and share some things with each other. Can we just give a moment for maybe some folks who want to uh, join us and we'll be connecting in uh, maybe on their work break or possibly even at home today. Um, but we're going to kind of, a couple of things I want to bring up before we go to uh, some powerful scriptures. Um, Again, Sunday was just a fabulous time of worship. Uh, and then uh, the message, uh, one of the elders of our church, Fred Cantu, spoke, was just powerful, dealing with our identity. Uh, I'm going to share a, kind of a pretty cool confirmation uh, regarding this whole idea of identity. God is really speaking that to the body of Christ. After uh, Fred had preached on Sunday, uh, yesterday, I, I get a thing from Bethel Church, uh, where uh, Bill Johnson's a pastor out at Bethel there in California, and they're just releasing a new release about our identity, and uh, I thought, wow, that's interesting, and then I shot that to Fred, I copied it over to him, because I wanted him to see, I said, man, God is speaking this to the body of Christ. Well, then Fred, he was just in Oklahoma at uh, United Tribes camp meeting down in Oklahoma, and somebody had given him a book on our identity, on just the importance of us grabbing a hold of who we are. We're going to review some scriptures today, and if you would like the scriptures afterwards, let me know, and I'll, I'll get them to you. But just some powerful scriptures about our identity, because it's so important that we realize who we are and that we begin to walk in who we are instead of living out of uh, old ideas about our identity uh, that uh, the enemy wants us to believe. But let me share two things real quick with you. The first is, uh, to, uh, we actually, tomorrow morning, we have, uh, I've committed to the prayer watch, uh, the night watch from 2 to 4 a.m. on every Wednesday through the month of October. Uh, that's going to be a, that's a prayer watch we're praying into. It's from now until November 3rd. It's a 30-day prayer watch that uh, Rick Warziak from Transformation Michigan has put together. And here's some stuff that he sent us, some prayer focuses for us to pray through on the night watch. And uh, if you would like to join me, if you will email me, Pastor Ron at pottershousefwc.org, I will send you back the phone number because we're going to do it through a conference call. We have one sister in the Lord that leads a prayer movement up in the UP uh, that will be joining for sure. And looking, would love to have two or three others where there'd be like four or five of us on this prayer watch from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. on Wednesday mornings through the month of October. And so if you would like to be one of those, uh, love to have you join us. I'm just going to read a scripture, Psalms 119, 148. It says this, my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. So we see uh, there in the psalm just this idea of being awake in the night and meditating on the Lord and praying and seeking the Lord. We're in a crucial time as a nation. And uh, we just, uh, I just, again, this morning I was on an early prayer time at 6, uh, 645 this morning. And we were praying and just really uh, sensing this incredible expectation from the Lord that there's going to be a real, there is activity of the Spirit going on, and there's going to be this incredible outbreak uh, of the Lord, of truth breaking forth into our nation, into our lives. And it's interesting, as we were praying this morning, just the reality to how many people God is quickening and calling to prayer. We finished a 21-day uh, prayer and fasting, had done a 48-hour prayer watch previous to that. I was speaking with another pastor yesterday. They're in an 85 days of prayer leading up to December 21st, which again uh, jumped in my spirit. Pastor Carla had given a prophetic word that from September, I think she said 20th, to December 21st was a crucial season. And this brother was saying that their, their church is in this 85-day prayer time leading up to December 21st. So God is doing things. There's uh, this 30-day uh, prayer watch, the night watch called by Transformation Mich Michigan with Rick Warziak. There's things going on in D.C., 
prayer going on there. God is, there's a prayer revival happening, but the Spirit of the Lord is prompting people to prayer because prayer moves the hand of God. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Psalms, I think it's 115, 16, or it's 116, 15, one or the other, one of them Psalms. He talks about that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he's assigned to man. The earth is our assignment, and God does nothing in the earth apart from partnering with man. And one way we partner with God and we release God into the earth is through prayer. So I encourage you, if you want to be part of that uh, night watch, uh, 2, 2 to 4 a.m. Wednesday, shoot me an email, and I'll get you the contact information. You can join us tomorrow morning is when we're going to launch that. And then Wednesday night, 6.30 to 7.30 is our time of prayer. And what we're going to start doing on Wednesday night in that season of prayer from 6.30 to 7.30, I'm going to teach on prayer for 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to do a teaching on prayer and, and use that time as a time to grow in knowing about and learning about prayer. And then we will pray for the next uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to just change that up just a little bit. I'm going to do a teaching on prayer and then we're going to pray on Wednesday nights. And then at the same time here at the church, uh, Fred Cantu is teaching our God's plan for Christian service. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't taken that class, I encourage you to jump in. It's a great class to learn about spiritual gifts, learn about God's calling on your life, and opportunity to grow in uh, understanding how God has called you to be active and to find your place in the body of Christ and to grow in the body of Christ. So, amen. Just a couple of infomercials there as we get ready to look at uh, what was shared on Sunday morning. I'd like to have you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 in your Bibles. I'm going to just give you a minute. If you haven't got your Bible there, go grab it, bring it. We're going to look at several scriptures together here. I encourage you to have a notepad, write them down. Uh, if you don't write them down, but you want them, I'll, I'm happy to shoot you an email and give them to you as well. But I encourage you to grab your Bible. If it's your phone, go to 1 John 4, 17 or get your a paper Bible and bring it out and let's take a look at this scripture. First John 4 17. It says this Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we when we get to heaven. No, you, you see that. That's not what it's saying there, is it? That's not what it's saying there. He's saying, just as he is, so are we in this world. That means now, just as he is, so are we right now. Now think about this. When is John writing this? It's after Jesus has ascended and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He's not saying just as Jesus was when he walked on the earth, so are we in this world. He's saying just as he is, so are we in this world. Just as Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, so are we in this world. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says this. I'll give you a moment to flip there. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are we seated right now? in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Just as he is, so are we in this world. Just as he is seated at the right hand of the Father, we are seated with him. We are seated with him. Wow, wow. I, Dr. Daniels, when she was here, talks, talk, was talking about we need to stay in our seat. We need to realize who we are. We are those seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the position of authority. That's the position of authority. And Fred shared on Sunday morning out of Matthew 28, 16, where Jesus said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples. What was he saying there? He says, all authority has been given to me. I'm releasing it to you. Now go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I've, that I've told you. So we have been given authority. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. That's our identity. We are kings and priests. Again, it's something Fred had brought out Sunday morning. We are kings and priests. Revelation tells us that. Exodus, where Jesus says, I would that you are a kingdom of priests. We are kings and priests. 
who have been released into the earth to represent God to people. That's our identity. We are the image of God. We're the image bearers of God. We are to go forth representing, representing, representing God to people where they look at us and they see God. We've been talking out of Ephesians 5. Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. So our identity, recognizing who we are, is crucial. And many of you, have Fred mentioned it Sunday morning, sometimes we just need to go to the mirror and say, I'm a child of God, I'm a son of God, I'm a daughter of God, I'm, I'm, I'm a son or daughter of the Most High. I'm here as an image bearer. I, I carry the image of God in me. I'm, I got the spirit of God inside of me. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the righteousness of God. These truths of our identity, so we begin to walk around being who we are, being who we are. Now, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, you're probably uh, pretty close to that right now. Let's, let's just take a look there, 1 John 2, 6. It says this, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. How are we to walk? Like Jesus. We are to walk like Christ walked. We're to walk with that anointing. We're to walk in that power. We're to walk in that nature. Love, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness. We're to walk in the nature of God. We're to walk in the anointing of God. Because just as he walked, we're to walk. We're to walk in the earth just like Jesus walked in the earth. Just as he is, so are we. Not when we get to heaven. In this world. In this world. In this world. We are to represent Christ. We are to represent God to people. Now go, go to Luke chapter 9, because again, this was a portion that uh, Fred shared with us, Luke chapter 9, verse number 1 through 14, and I'm just going to just relay the account to you, because I, I want to try to stay inside of about 15 minutes here, but Jesus sends the disciples out. He, uh, let, let's just look at verse 1. I want you to see this. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all we have dudamus power, we have exousia, delegated authority from the king to go and over all demons and to cure disease. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. We're sent to preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick. Well, they go and they, and they do it. And then they come back to Jesus. And then uh, uh, there's all the multitudes there. And the disciples say, well, just send them away. Jesus says, no, you feed them. He says, remember who you are. Remember who you are. Here they've just been doing the works of Jesus. They come back and they forget their identity. They forget who they are. And so then Jesus says, no, you give them something to, to, something to eat. Man, we can look at this world and say the world's all messed up. And God's just saying, no, church, rise up, walk in your identity, and you give this world something to eat. Give them living bread. Give them the expression of who I am. Manifest who I am. The world is blinded. Now bring light to them. Bring revelation to them. Me to them. Because that's who we are. We're the image bearers of God. That's our nature. We have the DNA of God inside of us. Inside of us. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. And this is another scripture that uh, Fred, Fred shared on Sunday morning. Luke 17. I'm going to give you a chance to go there because I'm trying to get there. My pages are sticking together. Verse 20 and 21, and he's talking about the kingdom. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. He said, it's, it's not something out here. It's not something out here. Nor will they say, see here and see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Wow. The reign of God, the rule of God is inside of us, is inside of us. It's, it, we're, we're to release, we're to reveal, we're to bring forth the manifestation of the kingdom, the manifestation of God into the earth. That's who we are. That's who we are. Now, one last uh, portion of scripture here uh, that I, that I want to share. It's in Romans 14, 17. Because what I see as I look around and, and, and different things like that, too often... Believers, people who have put faith in Jesus Christ, look the same as people who have no faith in God, who deny God, who, who have no uh, sense of relationship with God. 
Yet believers, those who have put faith in God, have this are responding the same way. They don't have peace, filled with fear. They don't have any confidence of seeing the goodness of God manifesting in the earth. They're walking around with their heads down, defeated. That's not who we are. We are to walk. He that says he abides in Christ should walk just as he walked. We have boldness because just as he is seated at the right hand of the Father in authority, so are we seated at the right hand of the Father in authority in this world, in this world, not in the sweet by and by, but now, but now, but now. Now, look at this here in, in Romans 14, 17. This is what we're to manifest. This is the kingdom, Romans 14, 17. Wow, it says this. I'm gonna get there. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, it's not outward observation, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what we're to manifest. We're to manifest the righteousness of God. We are to manifest the peace of God. We are to manifest the joy of God. The joy of God. That's, that's our identity. That's who we are. That's who we are to manifest. That's who we are to manifest. Do you realize who's inside of you? God lives in us. God lives in us. We are new creations. The old have passed away. The old man died with Christ on the cross, Romans 6. We now are a new creation. We are made in the image of God. We are to be image bearers. We are to manifest God in the earth. That's our identity. We've been given authority. We've been given power to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to preach the good news, and to manifest the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the earth. <laughs> my, 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 my. We just got to tap into, get the revelation of who we are and tap in to the God who lives inside of us and to release it. And Fred said over and over, I can't remember how many times, it's no longer I that liveth but Christ that liveth in me. Wow. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of the glory of God being released in the earth is Christ in you. For you to realize who's inside of you and, and your identity in him. Christ in you, the hope of glory manifesting. Man, the world needs, it says in Romans 8, the world's groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God for the revealing of the sons of God. The earth is groaning right now for the church to realize who they are, to recognize our identity, and to begin to walk in it. Hey, be like Jesus today. Let Christ live through you today. Manifest, represent God to people that you come in contact with. Father, I pray today revelation to us. I pray, God, that we would receive the revelation of who we are in Christ and who you are in us. Manifest. God, let the church, your people, God, manifest the kingdom. Manifest the king in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, have a great day today. Let's do this thing. Let's be the people of God. Let's be people that are fearless. Proverbs 28, 1 says uh, people flee when, when there's no one even pursuing it, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Let's be bold in God. Let's be strong in God. Let's be confident in God. That's one thing this morning as we were praying, and I'll end with this. In the early morning prayers, we were praying. There was such an expectation. There was such a confidence of God breaking in and moving and stirring and bringing his glory to be manifested in the earth. Man, we're the gates. We're the gates. We're the ones that open the way and let the king of glory manifest out of us. Have a great day.